This is your WCIA 3 forecast first. 9 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us I'm outside in our back parking lot for our day of giving, promoting, and really going towards charities and organizations that go towards our Victory Over Violence initiative. It's actually a great, nice, sunny morning out here. A little chilly and a very Midwestern thing to say. The wind is a little chilly. If it wasn't so windy, it wouldn't be that bad out there. But we'll take a look at our current conditions right now. And you'll notice that we have a 39-degree reading in Champaign. Actually, one of the coldest spots on the map there. But it looks great, nice and sunny on our Woods Basement Systems weather camera on our Flooring America. Inet. Winds coming in out of the northwest. That's the direction that they're going to be out of for most of today. Keeping our wind chills down, we have a wind chill of 33 in Champaign, 30 in Watsika. Everywhere else, though, a little bit warmer, closer to 40 degrees. It is going to be a mild day today, all things considered, getting into the middle and potentially even some upper 40s out there today with a few passing clouds here and there. We'll talk about some rain chances and then more in the way of some warmer temperatures coming up. WCI 3 News starts right now. All righty, well, thank you for joining us this Tuesday morning, our day of giving. I'm Matthew White. And I'm Karina Rubio. We have a lot in store for you in the next hour of the morning show, but first, let's take a look at your eye opener. Congressman Rodney Davis has decided not to run for governor, and we're going to take a closer look at his latest political plans. Plus, there's a ban on trench coats. We'll tell you where that's happening in our trending topics of the day. And as we just mentioned, our day of giving kicked off just about two hours ago, but it's still going strong. We have a look at how the community is helping make this all possible. All that and more in store for you on The Morning Show, which starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. Champaign County Crime Stoppers needs your help tracking down the man who shot at two people. That's right. We first reported this story about a week and a half ago. Urbana police say the man shot at the victim's car several times and took off. Police were called to Matthews and Bradley just after 9, and this was on the night of November 18th. A man says he was taking his co-worker home, and that's when the driver of a white vehicle pulled up. Then a man started shooting at their car. The victim says he was grazed by a bullet, and fortunately, he and his passenger are okay. Urbana police believe that this shooting was targeted at the car, and the victim was driving, but they are working to learn why, and the victim says he has no idea why he was hit. So if you know the person responsible, as always, you're urged to contact Crime Stoppers. You can receive a cash reward and stay anonymous. Just open the camera app on your cell phone and point it at this flow code on your screen. That will direct you to the Crime Stoppers site to submit your information. And again, you could possibly earn up to $1,000 in cash, and you can also report an anonymous tip in other ways, and we have those instructions on our website, WCIA.com. Now, if you didn't already know, Champaign County Crime Stoppers is one of six groups that will benefit from WCIA's annual Day of Giving that's going on right now. Kicked off at 6 a.m. We'll be there till 7 p.m. in our back parking lot. We'll also be online accepting those donations on WCIA.com. Now, this year, our event has an emphasis on our Victory Over Violence Initiative. The money you donate will help pay for solution grants to address recent violence. So we do look forward to this day and all the support that you guys help bring in. Well, speaking of violence, Danville police are investigating two shootings. The first happened last Wednesday. An 18-year-old was shot near Robinson Street. They should be okay. Police say they're looking for two suspects. The second shooting happened Sunday at the Marathon gas station on East Main. A 24-year-old Danville man was shot in the shoulder while sitting in a car. Witnesses told police they saw the shooter in a red jacket, and they then left in a silver-colored SUV. Well, Rantoul police have arrested a second man for a shooting that left a teenage girl hurt. This all happened on Gleason near Gates back in October. And police say a 16-year-old girl was hit by a bullet that was fired from outside of her home. Officers then arrested 36-year-old William Gray, who you see now. They say he had a gun when he was arrested, and now he's facing several charges. Those include attempted murder and felon in possession of a firearm. Then another man, 37-year-old Rory Nelson, is also charged in that shooting, and he's accused of aggravated discharge of a firearm. Republicans will win the majority in Congress in 2022. And he hopes to be one of them. Congressman Rodney Davis will not run for governor after all. That's right. And this morning, he will officially announce his plans to run for re-election to return to Capitol Hill. We're told that Davis was mulling over this for months in his decision to run for governor. And our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell tells us that decision was surprisingly easy. Would you like to stay in Congress? Yes. Congressman Rodney Davis said in August he's not ready to leave Capitol Hill. I think we've got a great opportunity as we retake the majority. That would mean a promotion to chair of the House Administration Committee, the top panel overseeing U.S. elections. And in two more years, 
He'd be next in line to lead another powerful committee. Uh, I would like to be chairman of transportation and infrastructure in Washington, D.C. Already in his fifth term, Davis is next in line to lead that panel behind Missouri Republican Sam Graves. Tuesday morning, Davis's campaign says he will publicly announce plans to run for a sixth term to Congress, steering clear of an ugly primary brawl in the governor's race and running in a new 15th district stretching from Paris to Pena all the way west to Quincy. Democrats drew his hometown of Taylorville out of the 13th district. A part of the reason why I'm running is Rodney Davis is specifically failing working families. That's where Democrat Nikki Budzinski is running with a majority of Biden voters. More Democratic voters are always great. And now that's an open seat Democrats hope to flip blue. That leaves first-term incumbent Congresswoman Mary Miller with no easy path to return to Congress unless she challenges Congressman Mike Bost or Rodney Davis in a primary battle. If I choose to make a race, I don't get in it to lose. Well, Congresswoman Miller has not given us any indication what she plans to do next, but tomorrow morning, Congressman Davis plans to go roll out a lengthy list of endorsements, which will come from elected officials across central Illinois, marking his territory in a district almost entirely new to him. Champaign Democrat David Palmer is running against Nikki Budinski in that primary contest. No Republicans have declared for that race. That election is scheduled for June 28th. And now that you're up to speed on the news, let's go ahead and get to the weather with Jack. Now, we were out there for our day of giving, and yes. really not a bad day out there to get out and donate. Jack, you know I don't like the cold, but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> it wasn't too bad at all. We do have uh, the nice sunny skies out there, and our temperatures are going to be warming up. The thing is, though, we've got a little bit of a wind out there that does add a little bit of a bite to the air. Here's our view down from our Flooring America and a camera, our Woods Basin Systems camera looking right down on our back parking lot off Randolph Street. There's the library there, and we have, uh, once again, our nice uh, kind of a uh, new setup here that we've had for our back lot parking lots where you actually come at, actually into our parking lot making it pretty easy you can then donate and then you can be on your way and it's a little bit safer you get off the road there too so it's a little bit of a uh, a nicer trend there that uh, we started during more of the covid months and uh, hopefully that we'll keep that that way because uh, logistically it's really good so here's our storm tracker doppler and satellite picture it's all quiet you'll notice that there are some clouds and some light rain showers far off to the west across portions of nebraska and kansas that'll actually probably get into our area by tomorrow Tomorrow morning, so there could be some light rain showers during the first part of the day tomorrow. But a lot of our forecast for the next few days will be dry. Again, temperature is not that bad. We have a 39 in Champaign, which is our lowest temperature out there, and our winds again not that strong, but it does add a bit of a bite to the air, coming in at around eight miles an hour in our back parking lot. And that's why it does feel like 33 in Champaign. But that will feel better later on today as temperatures are able to rise into, we're thinking a lot of middle and upper 40s and even a few low 50s out there. In terms of our forecast for today compared to yesterday, uh, guys, the western side of our viewing area was a lot warmer than the eastern side because we're all pretty sunny today. We should all be a lot closer in temperature. So a lot of us should be right around 50 degrees, which is not that bad. Ooh, and, and it's we're getting so close to December and we're still seeing 50s and 60s. Yeah, we got yeah, we got <laughs> 50s and 60s on our forecast too, so we'll talk about that when we go back outside. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, kind of some weird weather for the time of year, but we'll take it on a day of giving event for like sure, that. For sure, for sure. All right, well, it's time for our trending topics of the day. First up, it took a mother in New York five days to get diaper cream out of her kid's hair. The kids were apparently trying to look like Elsa from Disney's Frozen. Their mom, Wendy Price, tried to wash it out, but after three hours of scrubbing and fruitless Internet searches... She finally went to Facebook because she needed help. Now, Wendy posted this picture of her two girls covered in white goo, asking <laughs> parents what she should do. Now, after waiting through more than 400 responses, Wendy decided to use some cornstarch, a fine tooth comb, and some baby oil. She then washed their hair with Dawn dish detergent. That gets everything out. Now, after repeating the process for five days, the diaper cream was finally <laughs> gone. Good. Oh, my gosh. That looks like a mess. That sounds nasty. Yeah, diaper cream. Diaper cream. <laughs> hey, maybe these these uh, girls here will be some future like makeup special effects artists. Yeah. In the movie sets because I mean they got the Elsa hair color pretty down to a T there. Uh, uh, <laughs> have you seen Frozen? Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it looks good, but that uh, that's permanent. Seems like it's pretty permanent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At least I didn't have to go and take the take the clippers and Ooh. just go to the hair. I'm glad we didn't go no that patches, route. Patches, right? Yeah. Oh man, it wasn't. 
diaper goo or whatever this is, but I did need to get a haircut, like basically up to my earlobes when I was oh. little, because I purposely stuck gum on it. Multiple pieces. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> so, purposely? <laughs> purposely stuck gum in it. So what mom, was the challenge mom was, I, I don't know, I was four. <laughs> I was probably bored and just wanting to, to Mama, experiment a little. Mama Rubio probably did not like that. <laughs> no. Oh no, but she's a hairstylist, uh, so yeah, she's just like, all right, you're, you're gonna get a chop. <laughs> it is what it is. I cried. <laughs> So this next video posted by a Gaelic football team in Ireland is going viral. Take a look. The Kerry Gaelic Athletic Association posted the video on Twitter writing, what else would you do during a stormy day in South Kerry? The video has now over 2 million views. So. So wait, well, there we go. It. So it kicked it, and it's wow. so strong. It's like it boomerangs it back. back. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that yeah. almost looks like they put it in reverse or something like well, that. Like an effect. But no, that's that's the wind, Jack, huh? It, it's um, <laughs> some, some of those uh, some of those British Isles, especially right there on the ocean, are like crazy windy, right. and they're windy like all the time. So yeah. that doesn't surprise me, but that's also <laughs> crazy to see. And also, I mean. He didn't even move that much when it came back. I mean, he just stood in the same spot. I know. It kind of looked like it barely almost clipped his head or his face there, though. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> he just looks bad. That's, that's accurate right there. Yeah. He's smooth. Yeah. Pretty cool. I don't think I can even kick it that hard, though, to get it to even <laughs> pop up like that. We both have short legs. Yeah. Jack does not have that problem, so. <laughs> Maybe Jack can do it. <laughs> I was, I like being goalie, and when I played okay. soccer, really? I was more of, like, the goalie guy, because I like to, well, I like to punt it, but um, I don't. <laughs> I'm a swimmer now, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not say. very good with the soccer stuff. Yeah. Catch Jack in the pool sometime. Yeah. All righty. Well, in our final trend, leather trench coats are all the rage in North Korea, but too bad they're outlawed now. It seems Kim Jong-un likes to wear real leather, expensive leather, imported from China. And some of his top lieutenants were also seen wearing leather during a military parade earlier this year. But when fashion designers started offering fake leather coats at half the price, Kim decided to ban them. So ordinary subjects will not, will not be seen dressing as well as he does. So he just, he likes the finer things in life. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Who knew he was a fashionista? Oh, right. <laughs> he That's pays a... attention to what people are wearing. Wow. It's a, it's a bold move there. It is a yeah. bold move. I... Well, it's when he got his haircut. Then I remember, like, a lot of the population <laughs> tried to get, like, the haircut Did like they? him, too. Yeah, They yeah. were trying to match his cut, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. I guess he just wants to be the one and only, though. He, he is their, <laughs> yeah. he is their dear leader, so, yeah. yeah. Very much so. <laughs> Uh, I guess he's leading the way in fashion as well. So, <laughs> kind of a Matrix vibe there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, with well, the like yeah. overcoat. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, if, I don't see him do that. I don't know if he could probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. All right. Well, still to come here on the morning show, we have your national news headlines up next. We'll be right back after this quick break.
from your local news leader, Karina Rubio, Matthew White, and Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Griffin. You're watching The Morning Show at 9 on WCIA 3. Welcome back, everyone. COVID travel bans are going back into place as countries try to slow the spread of the Omicron variant, at least until more is known about it. The CDC says Omicron emphasizes the need for Americans to get a booster shot and is now recommending all eligible adults to go out and get the extra dose. CBS's Laura Podesta has the latest details. Health experts around the world are digesting data about the Omicron variant of COVID-19. There is some evidence that it does seem to be spreading more easily. And then the second is, does it cause more severe disease? And that we just don't have any data on yet uh, at all. Calling Omicron a variant of concern, the World Health Organization says it has the potential to pose a very high global risk. No country, no community, and no individual is safe until we are all safe. The variant was first discovered by researchers in South Africa. Scientists at the Africa Health Research Institute are growing live Omicron, which will be tested against the blood of fully immunized people, as well as those who were previously infected. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. At the White House Monday, President Biden defended the travel restrictions barring non-U.S. residents from eight Southern African nations from entering the country. Gives us time to take more actions, to move quicker, to make sure people understand you have to get your vaccine. Sooner or later, we're going to see cases of this new variant here in the United States. President Biden says on Thursday he'll lay out a strategy to fight COVID this winter that includes vaccinations and testing. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Let's take a look at what's going on around Illinois. From newborns to teenagers, a new pediatric office in Peoria is offering another medical choice for parents. For the last few weeks, Springfield Clinic Peoria Lindbergh has been open, offering their services. The healthcare company is hosting a public open house this Saturday from 10 until noon. Staff say it's a chance for new and old patients to enjoy holiday themed activities, but also to dive into their services. We take care of kids who have chronic um, illnesses, some mental health issues and behavioral health issues. Um, we really have various things that we love to do. Amanda is great um, with adolescent females. That's sort of like her forte, but also loves newborns. We both are looking forward to taking care of medically complex patients. One of the more noticeable features of the new office is the holiday-themed mural. It was created by one of the nurse's daughters. They plan on using it for multiple activities during the open house. Jack has your forecast outside from our Day of Giving event right after this quick break.
with the Boys and Girls Club, this is the award she can receive. And it couldn't have gone to a more deserving person. It's a prestigious honor for all of his hard work with the Boys and Girls Club. Don Moria Jr. was inducted into the Illinois Boys and Girls Club Hall of Fame yesterday, the first person ever to get that award from Champaign. WCI3 Sarah Lehman was at that induction ceremony to show us the event filled with emotion and cheers. That might call for a stand. Don Moyer Jr. has been involved with the Champagne Boys and Girls Club for decades. It's a legacy with his family. His father started this, this club many, many years ago, and he has been an integral, integral part of the, the success of this club over the last 40 to 50 years. Bob Plucky is the board president. He says thousands of kids have been impacted by the Moyer family, in particular Don Moyer Jr. We have a saying around here that it's always about the kids, and so... This award is really about the kids and what we've been able to do for them and the impact it's had on our community. And uh, Mr. Moyer has just been out front in all this regard. Kids like Joe Stovall. He says when he was growing up, the club was the foundation of his family. I grew up two blocks from the club, and so all the activities and things that I got to do as a child were totally associated with the club. The club was that foundation as my youth. My first job was here at the club. Uh, first baseball game with the club, so a lot of activities I got to do growing up came right through these doors. He says he's just one voice of the many kids who've come through the doors of the Don Moyer Boys and Girls Club, and he says he can't thank the Moyer family enough for what they've done for the community. The club has always provided outlet for kids who need it most, regardless of socioeconomic background, regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. The club is the place to be if you want a positive result in your child's life. Mayor Deb Finan also declared yesterday Don Moyer Jr. Day. Moyer is the first inductee of the 2021 class into the Illinois Boys and Girls Club Hall of Fame. Now, we've been featuring our day of giving throughout the morning show. It's been off to a great start, and that's where we find Matthew White out there to give us an update. Not too bad out there, I'm sure. Karina, that's right. We're still out here for our annual day of giving. It's the sun is shining, and that just means there's all the more reason to come out and enjoy it. You've seen the forecast with Jack. It's a clear day and a dry day. But obviously, we've seen some giving people already this morning. We've had quite the few donors. The last that I was out here, we were over about $1,200, and I'm sure that goal has just been surpassed in just the last few minutes. But I do want to encourage you at home to come out. Um, this is obviously our goal here. If you can see, $30,000. We hope to surpass that. And the funds that you donate at home will actually go to our solution grants which will benefit six organizations that are here in our communities in central Illinois trying to achieve victory over violence. You've heard that initiative repeated on our WCIA 3 newscast, but those organizations, if you don't know, Crime Stoppers, First String Inc., Go-Getters, Shop with a Cop, Dream Girls, and Midnight Basketball. And as we speak about that, I want to invite Reverend William Col Col Comer over here uh, mm -hmm. to join me this morning. Um, and Reverend, you've obviously seen the impact that you've had on our youth and our communities. Can you talk about the essential need that we have and giving them that positive opportunity? Well, the the, the what's essential for young people today is that they have to have a place to go yes. uh, they need a safe place if I don't have a place to go and I don't have people uh, who are around me um, who can teach me, train me, develop me, then what do I do? I go to my friends, I go to those who, um, that I'm around, and whatever they teach, whatever we're doing, that's what we do. So it's essential that we have a place to go. It is, uh, it's, it's why we do midnight basketball. Um, if someone asks, well, Rev, what is it that you need more than anything else? We need to make sure that we have a stable gym. We need to make sure that we have a space uh, that's big enough. Right now, we're doing about 84 kids in a gym with just two baskets in it, um, you know, and so to be able to have a stable place where kids can come, um, it, it's just unbelievable. We have to have that. Well, and you've seen that we've had a lot of violence in our communities recently, and so in your efforts trying to achieve victory over violence, you've seen some positive growth in the youth as well, and so how much joy does that give you to see? Oh, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I, I'm literally losing my mind. Um, the, the, the blessing has been that not only are we doing midnight basketball, but now we're in every Champaign school. So when I leave here, I'm going to Jefferson to hang out with kids and have lunch with them. And we do that Monday, I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're at a different school having lunch with students, being able to have that conversation. Uh, to the point where they even came up with a victory over violence kind of thing. They they do something like victory over violence. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they was, I was just like, okay, where's Start victory over truth. violence? Right, 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 right. So to be able to have them embrace victory over violence. That's what's going to change the culture in our community. Well, 
and they see the positive examples in us, and I think that's what carries it through. And that's so, it. Reverend Comer, I just want to say, too, one last question. What are you hoping to achieve after today, just with our youth, and is there anything else you want to expand on if you receive some solution grants? Oh, yes, definitely. So one of the things that we've kicked off is uh, on track. So we're not just doing basketball. We're in our schools, and we're doing an on-track program where we're now using RC cars uh, as a way to keep to talk to kids about staying on track in life. If you can keep this car on track, if you understand that you can win if the, your car stays on track, you can win at life if your life stays on track. So that's our next big push is staying on track. Well, Reverend Comer, we thank you for all that you've done in our oh, community, man, thank sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got, to, we've got to turn it back over to Jack for the forecast. Jack. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Gerfin. Thanks, Matthew. Really, it's just a great day out here. A lot of very good organizations that are deserving of this money, and it's nice to have a nice forecast for our day of giving for today. We'll take a look at some of our conditions, and you'll notice that uh, it is very sunny in the back parking lot here. It's also that way on our Woods Basin Systems Flooring America INA camera as we look downtown and looking at our back parking lot. Now, we've had some cold days out in our back parking lot. We've had some warm ones. This one's not too bad. 39 degrees in Champaign. There's a bit of a breeze out there coming in out of the northwest. It does drop our wind chills down into the lower 30s, but we do expect as we go throughout the day today for temperatures to be actually very warm. Most of our temperatures will be in the middle 40s at the very least. In our day of giving forecast, as you can tell, by about 4 o'clock, 2, 4 o'clock or so, somewhere right in there in the afternoon, we'll be able to get into, we're thinking the middle 40s, upper 40s, possibly even some, some lower 50s out there too. So our temperature range here will be going back down below normal by the time we get to the weekend. So that will be something that we'll be keeping an eye on there. Our storm tracker Doppler is quiet across the region and also off to the west. We're looking at some clouds, but it should be a nice sunny day for today with highs topping out at around 49 degrees. Across the viewing area, it could be a little bit warmer and we could, look, could, look, could be looking at some warmer spots here off to our west, um, but it will not be as a difference in temperature like it was yesterday. Tonight will drop down to a low of 36, and as we take a look at our seven-day forecast, as I jump to that really quickly here, you'll notice that uh, we've got temperatures that'll be near 60 degrees by the time we get to Thursday. Once we get to the weekend, though, and early next week, our temperatures are then going to be falling. We'll be right back after this. This is The Morning Show. We are three and a half hours into our annual day of giving event. Now, at last check, we were at about $1,200. Now, Matthew White's out there right now. Matthew, we're only going up from there. 
That is definitely the goal here on our annual day of giving. As you said, Karina, we've seen a lot of giving people come out in our communities already. Um, and, and obviously here, we, our goal is $30,000, but last we checked, as you mentioned, $1,200 was the amount that we were at. I'm hoping that we've reached a little bit over that, um, but lately um, we've seen a lot of uh, selfish people coming out and just making their voices heard to achieve victory over violence. And so we do hope that you at home can come out and make the time. But now I want to make an opportunity to invite um, our next interview. Um, can you tell me your name? Yes, yeah, sure. Not told me. That's okay. It's Dawn Trimble. Dawn Trimble. Yes. Are you with this I'm with Champaign County Crime Stoppers. Okay. And so one of the six organizations that will hopefully benefit from our solution yes, grants. Yes, definitely. So can you tell me um, this morning just kind of what you're hoping to achieve if you were to receive some of these solution grants? Sure. Right now we have our illegal gun bounty reward program, and it's at $1,000, which isn't much to many people anymore. And uh, we would like to raise that amount. And so we're hoping that with these funds today, that'll kind of help push us towards our goal um, and be able to raise that reward in order to entice people to come through with more anonymous information to us so that we can pass that on to police and we can begin to solve more crime in our in our community. Well, and I'm sure that it disheartens you to know that we've had a lot of youth involved in some of that violence in our communities. And as yeah. we partner with United Way of Champaign County, they want to see the change in those youth lives. And so can you talk about how these grants and these donations will help make that possible? Yeah, so I think this will also help us, um, you know, get more into the schools and start talking to the youth a little bit more um, and just letting them know that we're anonymous and they don't have to worry about you know that retaliation and those kinds of things they're completely anonymous and they can have a cash reward with that so we definitely want to encourage that information and I think um, unfortunately more money is the way to do that and you know um, it is what it is at this point but we'd like to do that we've seen that happen in other communities around the country with other crime stopper programs and we know that that can work here well, and on a more positive note we've got the sun shining we've seen a lot of donors come out yes, this morning already definitely. and so to just talk about the joy you've been feeling seeing that our community is giving yet again. Yeah, definitely. Every time somebody drives up, we kind of give a little <laughs> cheer, and it's exciting to see people come out and um, and give with their hearts um, this Christmas season. Well, and I know it is the season of giving, and it so is. we obviously encourage all of our folks to come out. And just one last question for you. Uh, wh what kind of gives you joy when you wake up in the morning and you get to be a part of Day of Giving? Oh, sure. Um, so today I woke up kind of with an extra pep in my step. You know, it was exciting. Um, we've been working so hard with Crime Stoppers. I volunteer on the local, national, international national level and so locally here um, that's my goal is just giving um, back to our community and keeping it safe and so uh, you know this last month it's been really uh, something we've been hitting the streets with and, and getting that um, getting those funds so All we're right. excited to do that well, so obviously come out for our day of giving you have until 7 p.m. and we hope that you can donate we'll be right back after the spring Now, when you incorporate your children into your family business, it provides an opportunity for them to learn how to work as well as principles for their future. And that's the lesson in our Harvest Heritage Report this morning. WCI 3's Ag reporter Stu Ellis has that story. On well, this edition of Harvest Heritage, we're honored to be on the farm of Alan Coleman. And uh, Alan's president of the Illinois Pork Producers Association. Alan, where are we right now? Here at my hometown of Altamont, Illinois. Um, we have a 1,000 uh, head uh, contract finish barn, and then we also operate a farrow to feeder pig finish building. Um, uh, we have uh, show pig sows, and then we, uh, we finish feeder pigs out all the way out to finish. You've got a lot of balls in the air with all of that. How I do. do you, how I do. How do you manage well, something like that? It, it slowly evolved. Uh, my wife and I have been married for over uh, 20 years. Uh, we've got four children, uh, three boys and one girl, and the, the family is a big part of what we do every day. Uh, if we don't involve our kids, uh, we feel like we don't, uh, uh, we haven't achieved our goal for the day. One of those is eldest son Jared. We uh, we got stuff to do. I mean, you got hogs to breed, barns to check. You got to make sure the feeders are full, and make sure they got water and feed. So, it's been a big part of my life and how I became the man I am today because of dad. He's raised me up the way. I should be. Um, Jared takes care of the uh, contract finish barn. Uh, it's got the feeder to finish pigs in it. And then Justin and Eric take care of the, the gestating sows and the farrowing sows and then the little pigs. He's not only overseeing his pork operation, but leading the Illinois pork producers. They keep me very well informed. They need to, uh, they need to know that what my schedule looks like and I need to know what their schedule looks like. Why do you do what you do? I just enjoy it. Pigs have been a part of my life since I was little. My dad uh, had sows whenever I was growing up. Uh, we just like to raise animals for the production of pork and to feed people in the world. All three boys have got a huge interest in farming 
And I think that's where Michelle and I just need to follow their direction and, and teach them, hey, this is the right financial steps to take to achieve your goals in life. And with their ages of 20, 17, 15, and 12, you, you kind of want to set them up the right way whenever they're little so that they understand that there's responsibilities to go with that. Well, that's our Harvest Heritage Report. We appreciate being on the farm of Alan Coleman down at Aldemont. This is Stu Ellis with WCIA 3, your local news leader. You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. Welcome back to The Morning Show. We hope you've been enjoying it so far. This is our annual day of giving, and it's been such a positive day so far. We've seen members in our community already give. And so now we're going to take a live look outside with Karina Rubio for our day of giving event. And Karina, as you know, we've seen such a great atmosphere out there this morning. And so what have you seen and learned so far? Yeah, definitely, Matthew. We've just seen so many generous people out here giving the donations that they're able to contribute. Now, we also got Santa Claus out here flagging some cars down. Hey, Santa, how's it going? <laughs> and Santa Claus is helping us celebrate today because we also have Christina Reestack, and she is with Shop with a Cop. How's it going this morning? It's going really well. Awesome. Perfect weather. Perfect weather. The sun is shining, and we're so happy to have you here. Shop with a Cop is an event that families look forward to every year. Can you tell us a little bit about its mission? Our mission is to reach out to the families families of Rantoul that are in need of a little extra brightening on Christmas morning. And so what we like to do is have our teachers get involved at the school, our school resource officer, you know, lets them know that we're getting ready to do our program. They submit these names. And then we as the officers this year, because of COVID, we're going to go shopping for those families. And then Santa will come with us and we will deliver the gifts to their house. Awesome. And of course, shopping requires money to buy all of those gifts. And that's why Shop with a Cop is one of several organizations that is benefiting. So what is the goal there? How does it help you? You know, is there an ideal amount that helps you guys get the, you know, ideal amount of presents? I mean, we always want to provide that 
present, but we also have families that have true needs. And so some of the phone calls that we've already been making this week to moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas are, we need bedding, we need um, pillows. And so every time we get a little extra money, we know we can provide a little something extra. So it's not just the toy, but maybe some basic needs that people could use. Definitely. Now, coming out here, making a donation will help contribute to Shop with a Cop and help make a family's holiday season just a little bit brighter. It's just one of several organizations, and we'll be out here till 7 p.m., so that's lots of time to come out here and donate. You'll see me, you'll see Christina, and you'll, of course, see Santa Claus right off of Randolph Street. Reporting live in Champaign, Karina Rubio. Back to you guys, Matthew. All righty, Karina, thank you for all you're doing out there this morning. Well, for the first time in two years, K-pop group BTS was welcomed back to the live stage, and Sandra Bullock looks for redemption in her new film. We'll have all, all that and more in your entertainment report. the morning show if you're just now joining us we are following our annual day of giving this morning and all morning we've seen our community members come out and positively give back to our communities six organizations will benefit from what's called solution grants and so we're going to send it right back out to Karina Rubio who's joining us live from right behind our studios and Karina what more can you tell us this morning well, Matthew, we are right here, excited for this day in our back parking lot. So if you're coming down Randolph Street, just pull in right here and contribute whatever you can. Uh, joining me this morning is Valina Claiborne, and you are with United Way of Champaign County. Thanks so much for being here this of morning. Of course, we're excited to be here. We are excited to have you here, excited to be working with you for this great event. Let's just take a quick step over here so we can let this car go through and give their donation. Uh, right now, tell us why you guys are looking forward to this event and how it's going to help United Way of Champaign County. This event is going to help the United Way of Champaign County impact all of our local organizations that serve our families, which will in turn serve our community. And exactly what ways will it impact families? How will it brighten their holiday season this year? So those of you that may have tuned in earlier, maybe you missed it, we had Pastor Willie Comer talk about the Midnight Basketball, which is great for getting all of the youth together and getting them off the streets and doing something productive, not only with their bodies, but with their mind as well. And then we also had Dawn here from Crime Stoppers, which is an amazing organization to help us, you know, circle in that crime too. 
Right. So we're focusing on organizations really that work toward finding solutions to curb violence in our communities. And as you mentioned, a lot of that starts with the little kiddos. So why is it important to focus on the youth? I think it's important to focus on the youth is that we have to remember the youth is the foundation of our family and they're going to be here, right? We're paving the way for them. And so it's so impactful for us who have been here already for a while to kind of bring them in, love them, teach them, encourage them and empower them. And I know we are at about 1350 as far as donations this morning. How are you feeling about that number? I'm feeling good about that, but we need more. We need more. I get that most people may be at work, but everybody has a lunch break and hopefully it will pick up during the lunch hour. We want everybody to swing through, maybe after work, and then come say hi and give us a donation. Definitely. I mean, any amount goes a long way. Doesn't matter That's if it's right. $1, $5, $100. We'll be here till 7 p.m. to collect any donation. Back to you, Jack. Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Gurfin. It's a great day for our day of giving. Lots of sunshine. Our temperatures not too bad. A little bit of a breeze out there, but again, it could be a lot, lot worse. Here's what it looks like from our Flooring America INA camera, our Woods Basement Systems camera looking down on our back parking lot. We've been seeing a steady stream of cars throughout the morning. We're waiting for that afternoon lunchtime rush and the evening, too. And of course, if you can't make it in person, you can always download our WCI weather app, and you can also download the news app, too. Visit our website. You can make donations from there. 39 degrees in Champaign currently 43 in Decatur, 44 in Lincoln, up to 47 in Effingham. With our wind chills down a few degrees from many of those locations, it does feel like 33 at times here in Champaign when the breeze kicks up. So again, a little chilly, but the sunshine is good. And you'll notice our day of giving forecast is mild with temperatures that will be able to get into the middle, upper 40s, and even some low 50s out there. We'll show that here in just a moment. So 
So we're on our way into the 60s by the time we get to the th to get to Thursday. But then once we get to the weekend, temperatures will be falling down after that, and then the trend behind that looks to be generally below normal. A lot of clear skies across a lot of the state currently on our satellite storm tracker Doppler, though picking up on some rain showers across Nebraska and into parts of Kansas. That little system will be making its way towards us by tomorrow morning, so there could be the chance for some rain. But for today, we've got a nice sunny day with temperatures around 49, northwest winds at around 5 to 15. Miles an hour. Then, as we go into the nighttime hours tonight, we'll drop down to 36. Less wind coming in from the west at around 2 to 5 miles an hour. We'll likely see our clouds on the increase. Here's our future track starting tomorrow morning. You'll notice that we've got some clouds out there and even some light rain showers here and there, too. So, we do expect some light rain showers for the morning of our Wednesday, even to around lunchtime. Then, after that, we expect a clearing trend. So, you'll probably actually see some sunshine by late tomorrow afternoon. But the morning and early afternoon tomorrow, most likely going to be cloudy with some light rain showers there. Then, we expect there to be some clear skies for going into the Thursday time frame where temperatures begin to warm up even more. And that's where our best of the seven day comes in. We'll top out at 61 for Thursday with a few passing clouds here and there, winds out of the west at around 10 to 20 miles an hour. Get to the weekend though, things will be changing. We've got dry conditions for Saturday, but then on Sunday we have our next system approaching. That gives us a chance for a wintry mix, which you'll see here with our future track. So going towards the end of the work week, we have high pressure still in control, keeping things pretty quiet here for us. But once we get to, like I said, Sunday, there will be a chance for a rain snow mix as our next system approaches into our area. As of right now, it's trending more in the way of rain showers. We'll obviously keep you up to date as we get closer to that, but that's pretty much our one system for the week. So, our seven day forecast we've got a nice day for today, partly cloudy, a high of 49. We're into the 50s by tomorrow with a chance for some showers in the morning. Then we'll have some 60s for Thursday, and we're still pretty close to that for Friday, too. But again, by the time we get to the weekend, temperatures begin to fall as our winds change directions, and we'll be looking at the chance for some wintry mix as we go into our Sunday with some flurries lasting into Monday morning. We've got still a few more minutes left of our morning show at 9. We'll be back out here at noon and we'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to the morning show. We are rounding out our 9 a.m. and we are still out here on our back lot ready to accept all your donations right here off Randolph Street. Absolutely. And we are joined and have the privilege to be joined by Peter McFarland, who is the creator of First String Inc. We've done quite a bit of stories with you, Peter, and we've, we've seen the positive change that you've made in our community. So can, for those who don't know, can you tell us what First String is and, and kind of what you've been trying to strive and achieve in a community? Well, First String is actually a youth program. It's, it, we runs uh, youth programming for a lot of the young youth in our neighborhood. Uh, programs is not there, um, and we try to bring uh, not only the young youth into our program, but we also for adults to come in and help out and volunteer their time, and give some kind of a positive outlook of what uh, the neighborhood should look like. And so it's it's been working so far, and it's got a lot of good feedback from uh, all the older <laughs> individuals as well as the youth. So it's been a great experience. And how do these donations help you continue your mission there at First String? Well, it actually helps us to make sure that um, the programs continue to run. Uh, we don't ever have to worry about the funding for the youth to have to pay to, uh, to be a part of it. Uh, if they can, we, we tell the parents and, uh, all the time that if it's a money issue, don't worry, ever worry about that. But there's still a small cost, of course, because it takes the cost to keep us going. And we've been going for 28 years. So uh, in order for it to work, it's got to be a, everybody pitching in and doing something, whether it's a donation from the community or somebody paying just a little bit just to keep their kids uh, playing or doing something. And we always tell the parents, you invest in your youth, you invest in your kids. So, so. And after 28 years, I mean, you're in, in control of a lot of different organizations in the community. I can't think of anybody who is less busy than you are <laughs> but I mean after 28 years you've had to have a lot of success stories correct I have the biggest success story I can have is when I a, a young kid who's been in the program come back and always say, hey, coach, I, sometimes I don't always remember their name, I remember their face, <laughs> but they always remember me, and that's, that is uh, a feeling that uh, I enjoy. Uh, the kids come back and knowing that um, uh, I was part of their life and had some success in, in having them grow up. Uh, so. And 28 years ago, what made you think, let me go ahead and start first string? What made you just jump into that? Um, me and my wife's family was talking about it along around the kitchen table one day uh, over my aunt, her aunt's house, and we decided instead of start talking about it, just do something about it. And we decided to jump in, and we started with baseball uh, early in life, and then got into basketball and different other programs that do a little bit of um, scouting as well. So it's a lot of things that we do to try and make sure that the kids are involved and have something to do for the summer and throughout the months. And Peter, I know you also said that you wanted to create a bridge for the kids who age out of your program so that you stay connected. And so you've been mulling over some ideas for that as well. Yep. Uh, we've been blessed enough to be able to, Kiwanis, we used to, uh, our age group usually go from 4 to 12 for Little League and actually kindergarten to 6th grade for basketball. But Kiwanis is now affording us to be able to go to 13 and 14 year olds. Um, and so one day we'll be able to, you know, work with a little bit older kids and just have something for them to do a lesson a little bit longer to stay with our program so that uh, they can con continue to get the same message day in and day out about how to, how to become successful in life. And so hopefully we can be able to grasp on to some of the older kids or the, the young teenagers to do, continue to do that kind of work. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for being out here. We're excited to have you here and being one of the organizations that benefits from this. But we will be back out here at noon, ready to collect your donations. But now we're going to see uh, more about the forecast with Jeff. Yep, we got our seven-day up right now, and you'll notice that uh, we've got nice conditions for today. We've got temperatures that are on their way into the upper 40s and low 50s. We'll then be in the 50s and 60s, we're thinking here, by the time we get towards uh, Thursday. And we'll be looking at maybe a chance for some winter mix on Sunday. That's pretty much our one system for the week, but let's get out here with the sunshine. We've yes. got some great smiling faces, too. It's a great day. <laughs> All righty. We hope you'll join us at noon right here on WCIA.